Today we're going to be talking about some of the questions that I've been receiving in regards to remote hiring. And I'm going to be answering your questions just in regards to some of the most common misconceptions and things that you can put into play in order to sort of go about maximizing your reward and potential from the remote hires that you go out and make. So my name is Esan Ahmed. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Within this channel, we talk about a mixture of real estate, business, and recruitment. So before we go into the Q&A, remote hiring for me is something that is quite ingrained within the culture of the businesses that I operate across real estate. And it's been an absolute game changer for me. It's something that's helped me expand a lot faster. It's, it's something that's allowed me to have resources that previously were quote unquote unattainable. And ultimately it's allowed me to fast track everything that I thought would be a lot, would take a lot longer to achieve. So going on to the first question. So what are the key benefits of hiring remote employees for a small or growing business and how can it impact the company culture? This is a great question because currently I'm working across in-office staff, remote staff in the UK and remote staff outside of the UK. And the culture is something that can sometimes clash. Obviously, if you've got people from different regions, people working in office, people working outside office, it's something that needs to be contained. It's something that needs to be, you know, it needs to be controlled to an extent. So the most important thing that we do is across all of our teams, every single morning, we will have a morning meeting. So that morning meeting will typically be on Google Meets and everybody within the business will be in that meeting. It'll be a quick 15 minute daily meeting and then sort of um, everybody will break down what they're doing, any problems that they're having, certain teams that are integrated will communicate with each other and everybody will have an overview of what's going on in the business. I feel that's a great starting point to, um, to, to getting a, a nice integrated company culture. Another thing, obviously, is WhatsApp groups. So WhatsApp groups, Slack groups, um, they're great, again, because everybody can see what's happening. Everybody can communicate in real time um, and everybody has access to WhatsApp. But ultimately, um, you know, it's it's within within the culture. It's good to have a laugh. It's good to sort of, um, you know, get to know each other on a personal level as well. And ultimately, people need to know that even whether you're based in office or you're based remote, if there's a problem, if there's an issue, that you can go to your team members. And that's that's the most important thing that we like to communicate. The next question, what are some effective strategies for finding and attracting top talent in a competitive remote job market? Okay, so this one again, so what I found was that some of the biggest problems that we had when it came to hiring especially in the UK, was firstly the cost. Um, secondly, the return on investment in terms of the labour. I felt like, you know, there was, the attitude was not the greatest. Um, the work ethic definitely wasn't amazing. And ultimately for what you're paying and what you were getting back in return, it was always a churn and a huge grind um, in order to sort of maximise that relationship. With regards to remote hires, how it came about for me was introduction, introductory. So it's not really, it wasn't really something that was on my radar. I had tried Upwork, I had tried um, Fiverr, I think it's called. And these portals were good to an extent. But again, I felt like the people were, were, were too business minded. They weren't necessarily... It wasn't relationship focused. I didn't really get a lot out of it. You know, it definitely wasn't something that I could build a business on. It was good for maybe small short term tasks, I suppose, maybe graphic design, maybe a little bit of data entry, but it wasn't something that I could build on long term. And I also found that some of the good remote staff on, um, on, on these portals were practically the same price as UK staff in office. So it just made, it didn't really add up for me. 
Um, but yeah, I, I properly got introduced to remote hiring whereby we actually integrated full-time staff into the business through an introduction. Um, and then that introduction led to another introduction and a referral and it just sort of snowballed from there. But I guess like the most effective way is word of mouth in my opinion, especially if you hire one and that person knows other people then that the person who's bringing you people, especially if they're incentivized by commission, is they're gonna be bringing people that are gonna add value to your culture. And they're already gonna know what the business is about from the person who's bringing them to the business. Okay, next question. How can businesses ensure seamless communication and collaboration within a remote team, especially across different time zones? I thought, I think I've sort of already answered this. So. Again, morning meetings, WhatsApp groups, Slack groups, um, training uh, across all areas of the business. Uh, also, sorry, within certain divisions of the business, whether it's remote or in office, should be done at least once a week. And then obviously private communication also. Okay, what are the best practices for onboarding remote employees and integrating them into the company culture? Okay, so with this one, um, on, in terms of onboarding, how we typically do it is we hire not based on interview, we hire based on trial. So what that means is we have a first round interview. If that's successful, then they come on to a second round interview. If that's successful, then they're on to a paid trial. That paid trial is generic. It takes into context pretty much everything that we use in the business. So from Google Suite to the CRMs that we use um, to everything else that's required in terms of just general day-to-day -day practice practice across the board and then um, the employee would then carry out certain tasks they'd, 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 they'd use their intuition we'd set them certain challenges within the task and see how they respond based on that trial we would then go about and hire that individual so the first week um, or first week to the first month actually they're typically shadowing somebody who's already in the business so again typically that could be somebody who's also remote um, or somebody in office. Either way, it's done through Google Meets and it's recorded. So the person who is new into the business not only gets something that they are told, uh, they're, they're taught hands-on, but then they've also got training material that they can take from that, make notes on, etc., etc. And then, yeah, so like I said, they, they have effectively a buddy, buddy slash mentor who guides them through the initial process of the onboarding side of things. And from there, you know, it's it's a case of just integrating with everybody else as the work progresses. On to the next question. How do you assess the performance and productivity of remote employees and what tools or metrics do you recommend? Okay, I think we're a little bit behind here, but I know there's a, a number of different websites. So you can use stuff like Click Doctor, I think it is. Um, which is a website where you can go and sort of you can log the time that somebody's um, sort of logged on from to when they when they're off the computer. Um, that's quite good. Um, but we don't really go that deep, if I'm honest with you. Um, we sort of do um, a week weekly targets. Within the weekly targets, the 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 their employee sort of sets their own targets to an extent that look, I'm going to do X, Y, or Z, and then. It's the job of the manager of that employee to make sure that those targets and what the employee has stated is in line with expectations and number two, that it's actually met. Um, and yeah, in terms of metrics, like I said, I would recommend daily reporting for sure. Um, I would recommend reporting on absences. I would recommend um, reporting on lunch when you come back, starting and leaving. This, this, this can be as simple as we have it, which is basically in a WhatsApp group doesn't have to be massively complicated. Okay, what are the common challenges businesses face when transitioning to a remote workforce and how can they overcome these obstacles? So transitioning from a physical in-office workforce to a remote workforce, um, it's actually quite easy, if I'm honest with you. It's actually very, very easy. It just, it's very, very role dependent. So typically, if the task is back office and it doesn't re require face-to-face -face, uh, communication with the customer, which in most roles it doesn't, 
then that role can be outsourced very, very easily. It's more so sales and customer facing jobs that are harder to outsource, but even they can be done over time. So um, the major obstacles are just, I would say, I would say training, um, the culture, the processes. It's more so transferring a UK slash US culture and dynamic into somebody who's based abroad in Pakistan, Philippines, Bangladesh, wherever it may be. It's not massively hard, but ultimately, if you can find somebody from those regions who's got excellent English, that makes the, 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 the process almost seamless. How important is it to provide remote employees with opportunities for professional development and growth? And what initiatives can companies implement? Okay, that's very important. Very, very important. Like with in-office employees, remote employees have dreams. They have goals. They want to get somewhere. So it's very, very important to offer incentives. It's massively important to offer professional development and growth. Um, and initiatives that you can, can implement are typically, what we implement is discretionary bonuses, managing other remote, remote employees underneath them, um, and yeah, you know, any other sort of benefits that you would give to a, an in-office employee, really. It's just a case of making sure that keeping them motivated, that's it. What are your thoughts on the future of remote work trends and how can businesses stay ahead in this evolving landscape? Okay, in my opinion, I feel like the US has taken up remote work massively across the board. You know, you see a lot of companies, especially larger companies, they've outsourced a lot of their customer care to India, Philippines, remote places, and it's saving them a lot of money but ultimately, is the customer service better? I don't know, that's arguable. But in my opinion, the UK is massively behind in that regard. I feel like the UK has not really picked up on the remote hiring trend as much as the US. And I feel like there is a gap in the market. I do feel in the, in, in the future, in the coming years, the UK will adopt that more, especially where um, in terms of small business, the small business current sort of scale at the moment is that you know they're un they're, they're not used to working on a basis where they can hire people remote and grow a lot faster and i feel like once that becomes prevalent in the market and people become aware of that and they can realize that you know for as much as as little as five to seven hundred pound a month you can get somebody who's dedicated to your business and allows you to be completely hands-off to the extent where you focus on growth that is a game changer because like I know when I started up, that was not something that was available to me. And it was all it always came came with its challenges. And there's no small business out there, even if it's a startup, that would not benefit from a full-time employee. There's it's just not possible. Even if you're a salesperson, you're working a sales job, whether it's recruiting, whether it's real estate, insurance, whatever it may be, having an extra pair of hands as a virtual assistant is invaluable.